Okay, so that's three minutes in. I will start and the people will uh, join us after a few minutes, I'm sure. So um, I'm, let, let's get rolling. So I'm Cédric Lundven and I'm leading the developer advocacy team at DataStax. And as developer advocates, we are doing training, public speaking, reference application, sample code, and a lot of live stream on YouTube lately uh, to show you how to use the product, how to learn how to develop. Um, so in the end, I will share some link for you. Uh, you should subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. Today is a workshop, a little bit of housekeeping. I expect you to do some hands on with me, even if in this 40 minute slot, you don't have to install anything. It's all web based, but still give you a good understanding of, of what the gateway and the you know, API gateway can do for you. Um, I am monitoring the chat so you can ask the question, your questions. I, I, I'm there. We also have uh, at least two uh, peers from DataStax helping with the questions. Uh, so go ahead, uh, don't be shy, and we will give you all the links through the chat. Also, you will have access to the end zone and the slides after the session. So this is the advocate team. Uh, Stefano is uh, with us in the chat. So this is the, the, the agenda for this session. Uh, I will introduce you what the platform does, uh, which kind of APIs you can expose on top of your data. And then we will have a walkthrough on multiple flavors of API. API uh, really Cassandra-ish, API document-oriented-ish, uh, GraphQL API, gRPC API, APIs. Okay, so the ID, uh, came from, hey, as a developer, do you like to learn new languages? You need to interact with the database. Of course, most, I mean, most engineers know what SQL is doing some joins and data modeling, sure. But as soon as you jump into others, uh, flavors of database, other format of database, no SQL, big data, then you have to learn new languages, SQL for Cassandra and one QL for FocusDB, GQL, for Neo4j and so forth and so on. So what if instead of having to learn each time a new language for a new database, you could have a way to normalize things. Uh, second is, as a developer, you don't really care how the data is stored physically. So you would like to have some kind of abstractions for you, only put your data in, retrieve your data and do not really uh, think too much about how the data is handled um, uh, at low level. And last, you may not like to, uh, <laughs> run databases locally in your development environment. Docker help us with that lately, but still if I can give you some uh, database running in the cloud for free with an API, why not, right? Okay, so let's keep rolling. Um, that's you as a developer, but in your company, you also have uh, uh, some folks in charge of the database themselves, administrators, DBA, SRE, those guys, do not really like to let you execute any kind of queries against their DB. It could cost a lot of performance, uh, cost a lot of money because you are not doing the proper things. It could be slow. And, you know, I'm sure you already have the, the issue that the database team just give you a, a store procedure. They do not really want you to, to dig into the data. Also, as an admin, uh, you don't want to open a wide range of ports. Uh, and same as same issue with the the skills you you need to hire special developers for special database specialized developer for specialized database so what what can you do well, let's see what 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 i can offer you today uh, okay uh last slide about this when those two guys meet each other developer and dba they seem to like each other but you know what it is um, we we hate <laughs> we hate us <laughs> anyway so the id um, so that we, we added that like two years ago is to provide a gateway, not an API gateway like I put something on top of an existing API. No, 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 a data gateway. I will install that on top of your database, and this is the data gateway that will expose APIs for you. Then, of course, you can have uh, third-party tools, dedicated API gateways to add even more technical features you would like to, but here the data gateway is quite simple. Expose some data services. So the platform is called Stargate. 
you can have a look at stargate.io. It's open source. Everything that I will show you to you show to you is open source or free. Okay, so uh, that's the, the the magic of it. You can use it today. You can keep using it uh, for free after the session. So Stargate is our get data gateway. You can have a look stargate.io. So maybe the first link you want to to, to have a look. Uh, so open source. As you can see, five five hundred star on GitHub, more than thirty contributors, and super active development by uh, us internally at Datastax. Uh, but it's a community project. We would like many people to work there to keep expanding the platform. It's an open platform, so uh, we should add more uh, database support, more API support. Okay, keep rolling. So this is um, um, a gateway. So the gateway, it's a proxy, right? Um, so the, the, the purpose is obviously to uh, decouple your database with the service to consume the data. At the bottom side, uh, at the bot uh, at the bottom, you find what we call the persistent extension. As of now, with the v1.0.39 that we are right now, uh, we are working with Cassandra. Okay, so multiple version of Cassandra because at Data Stacks, uh, we provide support for open source uh, Cassandra, and we want to enable anyone to use Cassandra for a lot of tasks, really. And so we exposed some REST API. Uh, you will see that's um, Cassandra-ish exposed as REST, uh, GraphQL, document-oriented API to use Cassandra like MongoDB-ish, no, waiting for your question here. Um, SQL, the uh, binary existing Cassandra protocol. We don't want to hide the existing uh, interfaces. And uh, gRPC, still in beta today, but GA uh, Monday next week. So it's it, it worth uh, talk about it uh, even today. So before to connect your application to your database, you had to know some uh, node of the IP, uh, IP nodes, exposing some binary uh, ports to, for you to communicate with SQL, at least for Cassandra, Cassandra query language, right? Now with Stargate, Stargate will join I mean, the flavor Cassandra of Stargate will join the Cassandra um, cluster as a node with no data, still expose the SQL interface, but now also GraphQL, gRPC, and REST. And I promise you will use all of them today. Uh, but, you know, that's the overall architecture, get you these um, node on top of your cluster. <laughs> You see me coming, you do not want Stargate to be your single point of failure in your architecture. So we will add multiple Stargate nodes on top uh, of your database just to be uh, I available. Those nodes are stateless. Um, no need for stickiness or anything. If they need to persist some, 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 some state like uh, validating your authentication token, they will store that, uh, store that in the database itself on a dedicated technical tables. So the nodes themselves are stateless, so you can uh, scale as you want and put a load balancer with no stickiness in front of it. Pretty cool. So now uh, for the Cassandra workload, you can scale, the, you can scale only the compute and not have to, to scale compute and storage at the same time. Because with Cassandra philosophy, if you need more capacity, you add new nodes. There is no master in this cluster. If you add, if you need throughput, you also add new nodes. Sometimes you only need throughput and you don't, do not care about the, 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 the capacity. So now with Stargate node, you can only uh, scale your compute if needed. So pretty cool with some, you know, in the future we could have, we could do more in the computation layer like aggregation or such that we don't have today, at least for Cassandra. 
So instead of having you uh, installing Cassandra and Stargate, uh, we will use the same things, but as database as a service. Okay, so we will use the free tier of something called AstraDB, which is Cassandra and Pulsar in the cloud as a service with Stargate already wired on top of it. Um, and this is how we will be able to do all these sessions um, with no installation. So without further ado, uh, this is a bit of housekeeping. So I would like you to go to this GitHub repo. There you will find all the instruction needed uh, to do all the ends on, but do not worry, uh, the session is recorded and I will do all the steps in front of you. Uh, but you know, with 40 minutes, we do have uh, enough time for uh, to, to do what, what, what we need. Okay, so let's get rolling with <coughs> Enzone part one and two. So I will move to this uh, screen. On the left part of the screen, you do have the GitHub repo I share with you. Okay, nothing, uh, nothing different. Um, so nothing different. Here, you do have also the slide as a PDF. And I will uh, start doing the, the end zone in front of you, starting with uh, point one, creator and instance. So I see question from David, uh, which database are uh, under as of today? As of today, only multiple version of Cassandra, but Cassandra only. But the persistent extension are developed in a way that you could wire others database. And here, um, this is also the, the purpose of today as an awareness. If you, you know, would like this platform to be the way to go for any database, that would be uh, some job to do to implement the persistence extension for extra, uh, extra technology. Okay, so let's uh, create the, the Astra instance. So here you do have a, a, a link. Um, if I if I do stuff exactly like you know from the start and and, and log out, uh, this is where you <clears throat> this is where you landed. You can log in with uh, here uh, Google or GitHub. You know, let's here I can connect with with. Git. Oh, we're sorry. Blah, oh, I'm already identified with another user. Yeah, sure. So, I will have to clean my cache. So let connect with my Google account. And here I go. So here, if this is the first time you're going to get into the platform, this is the UI you will have, create a database. So here I give you the name. So FreeDB and the key space name TS1. So the key space is like a schema in Oracle. Okay, so nothing special. It's a logical grouping of tables because Cassandra using tables. There you can pick any region you like, no difference. Uh, maybe something close to you just to reduce the latencies, but for uh, for this uh, demo, no big deal, right? So let I will pick one from Belgium and I will create a database. Um, I will do 3db2 because I think I already have a database called free db the platform won't prevent me to have two databases called free db but hey i would like to be sure to, to which one to pick each time we do the steps of the demo uh, so you can see that it's now uh, brown and you will switch to green because uh, we are really initializing a full uh, cassandra cluster for you three node plus the stargate plus more um, pods because everything is in Kubernetes. So this platform run totally in Kubernetes. And if you like to run some database in Kubernetes, I would recommend to have a look at katesandra.io. The, the platform is based on that, just to have Katesandra and everything uh, uh, running in Kubernetes. Really the only way to, to do and to go in, in 2021 to, um, yeah, to, to to have a little bit of markup when you use database or infrastructure just too expensive. So DB2 is initializing, but I can go with uh, uh, free DB because it's already there. So the initialization should take about two minutes and then you will have your status active over there. 
So as soon as the database is active, what I would like you to do is go to the SQL console. It's here, step two. Uh, you can now copy some uh, GitHub block here with the new button copied here and paste. So control C, control V in Windows, POM C, POM V on, on Mac. Uh, right click, copy, uh, right click, paste uh, on others platform or uh, <laughs> old fashioned brothers. Uh, brothers. So here you can see I do have my key space case, case one and I will use that key space to avoid uh, to prefix any new query. That's nothing re really uh, to, to API. We are um, we are creating some 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 structures and data for later to work with the API, okay? So here I created two, I mean, one tables and one, what we call a user-defined type. So Cassandra work with tables, but it's not exactly the same tables as uh, SQL. Here you see you, you can create text, which is kind of Varchar, but you can also have some attributes which are set, list, or map. And here, so my attribute is a map of an object, a structure, a structure I provide myself here, video format, uh, that will have a width and a height. And with that, I can just describe my key space to see which are the object there. And this is what it looked like. Okay, so I do have my key space. So with a replication factor three, I do have no, I do have three nodes of Cassandra for me in with this platform. Uh, notice you are you never provide any credit card. Okay, it's free. Uh, it's free up to uh, forty million queries a month, and after that the database will hibernate it and say, hey, okay, so it seems like you are a pretty active user. Would like to, uh, you know provide a credit card and get a few uh, bucks to the team. <laughs> but you know, 40 million, uh, 40 million queries a month, that's a lot. And uh, all your development you know, environments could rely on those to be honest. Okay, um, key space one is created, case one is created, uh, table and UDT is there. I will Keep moving and now insert some data. Again, copy pasting. I can insert some data as a JSON. You know, uh, probably among some among you say, yeah, Mongo, JSON, Cassandra tables. Well, in Cassandra, you can always use, you can also use JSON. The issue though is when you insert JSON and select JSON with Cassandra, you really need to match all the field names. If there is a schema and the, Strong validations, I would say. Uh, not the flexibility of a schemaless. Still, you will see that the APIs that provided by Stargate uh, allow you to do these schemaless that you expect. Okay, so that's uh, inserting some data, reading some data. So not really some API right now, but hey, to do to work with APIs on top of the database, not only you need the database, but a little bit of data in the database. And this is what we did, just adding a couple of record in the video table. You can select or, or uh, retrieve one video with by its ID. And with that, we are set and I can move you to, hey, a little bit of what is in the REST API demo, what is in the second API demo and so forth and so on. Uh, and we still have uh, 28 minutes to walk through all the demo and you know, that's more than enough. Okay, so looking at your question right now, I totally expect that it will take a few minutes for you to catching up, that's cool. So, you know, when you're done or at least when your database is active, uh, you know, please me, give me a, give me a hook in the chat and you know, I will keep going uh, with the explanation.
So we are doing these these uh, step by step live every weeks um, on multiple topics. So it could be Java, C Sharp, Node, Python, uh, React, um, mobile development. Anytime we are building some small application on top of uh, these APIs. So if you want to have real application using those APIs, I will give you some after that. Okay, I will wait two more minutes. Uh, let me give you some here samples. So here is the first link of a lot of sample code using those API, but also, maybe you have noticed here that big button sample app gallery. Uh, and here you see some uh, full working app using those APIs. It could be the REST, the GraphQL, or the document API. And as you can see, we do have a chat server, Python, uh, Spring, a lot of Spring, Spring Boot, Spring Data, whatever. Okay, okay. So I will keep going, um, expecting that you have completed step one and two. Okay. So first, uh, the what we call the REST API is um, anything that Cassandra can do, like create a table like we just do, uh, listing the key space, creating a user-defined type, those are Cassandra-ish um, um, operations. And the REST API is taking those operations and exposing them as REST API, okay, RESTful uh, using uh, the, the HTTP verb and, and, uh, and um, HTTP code as you expect. So listing the key space, listing the table, creating a table and so forth and so on and uh, performing some queries, you both have the DDL to create the structures and the DML to work with the data. Okay, so this first, uh, it's called REST API, but it could have been called Cassandra REST API because in this first one, uh, you see the keywords uh, related to, to Cassandra. Okay, so I told you not a lot of slides all about playing and uh, using it. So to use those API, you need to be authenticated. And so you will need an API key. And uh, the first step in ends on number three will be to create an API key. So um, to do so, here you do have the doc, but maybe it's better if I, if I show it to you. I'm going to organization settings, token management. Maybe put that a little bit bigger. Select a role. So let's do a database administrator. I can do whatever I like. And I will generate a token. The token, it's composed of three uh, items, client ID, client secret that you can use later as user password or and the token. And this is really the token that I would like to pick here because it will be our API key. I put it in a text file because I will keep reusing it. And as soon as you do have your API key, you can go back to the home screen, but it's all written there. No, no, no worries. It's just here written there. This is where you copy your token and have your token is in a text file. So I will have him. Okay, let me put you there. Hey. Okay, so I know that the guy is here. Okay, so let's go. Um, picking my database, FreeDB. Uh, now I will go to the Connect tab, no more SQL console, and I will use the REST API, so selecting REST API. Uh, of course, under the hood, it's still Cassandra, so you can use any Cassandra drivers, and we also have some software development kit to ease you the usage either of the database or the APIs. But I will come back to that in the end. So here you do have the launching swagger. So in the gateway, not only you do have the uh, endpoint exposed, but also the specification exposed for you to generate client if you want to. 
Uh, if, if you don't want to use the SDK, you can use Swire Gen. Uh, but no, it's also cool to have it in front of you to uh, use it, especially for a demo like that. So let's keep rolling. First things we can do is listing the key space. So here I will go to the schema part. Uh, make sure to pick V2 schema key space, V2 schema key space. You just say try it out, provide your token. I think it's still in my clipboard. Yes, it is. Execute, and you do have a first call to list all the key space. You know, you <laughs> tends to always do your first API calls with the one and needing no parameter, find all, get all, list all, or whatever. It's always the same, the same thing. Uh, now you you can also here, and I will simply go there and uh, do the step in front of you. You can list the table. We are still working with uh, the schema here. So list the table of the key space guys one. And here you can see we do have video, the table I created before. Okay, I can also list the types, which is the user defined type. Try it out, provide my token, provide my key space, execute, boom. I do have my type code video format. Okay, read, read is good, but uh, to build a real app, you need to, to uh, also <laughs> write, right? So um, why not creating a table? So here you go to post, uh, try it out, provide your token, provide your key space, and uh, provide your table as a JSON like that. Okay, so you will provide your table name, column name, column definitions, column type, if the if it's part of the primary key or not, get the column. So now I do have a new table called users. If I go back and request the list of my tables, don't have to do anything, but here now, not only I do have videos, but I also have users, okay, so no, no surprise. And if I want to insert some rows, in uh, my new tables to complete the loop. I will move from the schema to data, DML, right? And I will say, okay, so now I would like to add some rows, try it out. If I provide my token, here it is. It's still KS1, table name, I think it was users. And here my first user. So pretty straightforward column name value. Okay, let me add this guy. Uh, what did I do? Let me see the tables, blah, blah, blah. What is, what, what does my table look like? Table, table. Okay, first name, last name, email, color. Uh, first name, last name, email, color. First name, last name, email, color. Yeah, I'm not sure why the guy is not happy. Did I provide the wrong table name? But, you know. That won't stop me. Uh, add rows, yeah, this is what I did, blah, blah, blah. Users, bodies, videos. Yeah, not sure why, guys, not. Um, may I do have a typo somewhere in my, my yeah, right now I don't see me, see it, but. Yeah, um, so is it users? Yeah, it should be. Should be the case one should be as well. Yeah. Key space table users. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, let me I won't get stuck here, but let me see if my users table is here there happy, providing the token. Oh that's funny, the demo effect one. And table name users, but I won't get stuck here. I will keep moving. First name, last name, colors, email. Yeah, that, that, that's right. I'm yeah, not sure why this guy is not happy. Arrows. So, oh, look at that. I pick V1. Okay. So the issue was in between the keyboard and the chair and as 70% of the time, right? So try it out, uh, give me my token, give me my, my key space, uh, guys one, give me my table name users and give me a user. Yeah, this is why we put some major version. The old one uh, was not as simple as this one. 
And here, of course, I can create some record. See, uh, nothing to worry about. Okay, all right. And now I do a three record and I can keep moving uh, to list the record. So search a table or retrieve the rows, try it out, provide my token. It create read a big lead, right? Nothing, nothing special about it. Case one, uh, and table users. Apex size, uh, let's say three, execute. And I get, you know, I get back my, my, and then I can delete the row and so forth and so on. But let's move to the next API, okay? So as you can see, this first API is kind of Cassandra-ish API, expose uh, all the concept as API. What's next? So next uh, would be what we call the document API using Cassandra as uh, or document oriented because as of now Cassandra can be you is a colon oriented. You need to provide a, a primary key. You can have some key, key value model with sample tables. Cassandra is pretty famous to be a good use case for time series because you can uh, insert millions of data points every second. And a graph database, so you can plug Janus, Janus graph on Cassandra. Also, um, DataSax have a, an enterprise product called DataSax Enterprise, which has, is, uh, which has Titan DB included uh, as a graph database. You can also uh, use JSON, I told you, uh, insert and select, but there you do have a schema. So what we did is, create a document-oriented API, which is schema-less. You can insert and retrieve a JSON document uh, with no strong validation by default. You can enable validation. Um, and it's under the hood, it's always the same technical table. The good things is now you can uh, search on any colon. You cannot, you, it, it was not possible before with Cassandra only. So this time is only V2, so I won't uh, do any stupid things for the next demo, uh, but it's validationless, okay? And you can use the JSON document. And hey, here we are talking about namespace and collections. So something that you may familiar, you are, you may already are familiar with if you were with uh, Mongo uh, or Couch previously. So let's see how it what it looks like. So now I'm going to the document uh, API. So listing the namespace, nothing special. We are just uh, listing the, the, the same key spaces. What I would like to do is uh, create a document. So here I will pick create a document, try it out, provide my token. My namespace ID is always the same. My collection ID, you can pick whatever you like. Here I put call, call one. And I, here I will put any JSON I like. So notice I'm using the same structures as before. Uh, now I do not provide any types for the colon. I can add whatever I like. And if I execute that, I will get back a token ID. So maybe I will also copy this token ID. Eventually I will uh, reuse it. Okay, so now I do have my token, my document created, I can move to retrieve some document from the collection. So here, search document in a collection, try it out. You want my token, this is my token. You want my key space, you want my collection name, I put collection one. And if I execute that, hey, I got all of those. And you say, hey, maybe I just want the email, you know, so we can filter with only the fields you need. So I think you can do something like that. And now only the emails are retrieved. So you can adapt the payload based on one you like uh, a bit uh, a bit as you would do uh, with, um, with GraphQL, right? Okay, so created a document, retrieving a document, retrieve one document. Yeah, okay, so quite, quite, quite the same. Simply now I will just provide my document ID. So here, okay, this one one document ID, oops, and uh, I should find this, my document, okay, uh, no big deal. What else can I do? Yeah, that just, uh, I can, yeah, I told you I can search on any properties, so let's do that maybe. So 
search document. We already have everything we need. I will simply add the where clause. Our search properties, no, I will just search this one, okay. And now I would like uh, everything with the email invent, so here it is, so see. Um, yeah, but maybe uh, I want to search on something else, like the title. So now I would say with titles equal that. Now there is no need to uh, query exactly on fields from the partition key, which is kind of new and cool in Cassandra, to be honest. OK, so that's document-oriented API. Uh, Create, read, update, delete, create collections. Uh, work without a schema if you don't uh, want one. If you still want a schema, here you can add a schema or retrieve a JSON schema. It's all JSON based. Okay, keep rolling. We still have a couple of things to show to you. So, next is the GraphQL API. So, GraphQL will heal the world. <laughs> I think half of the session you will see today on API days will be on an API. Super famous things. Uh, GitHub announced that everything will move to, to uh, GraphQL. I don't think the company fully realized how strong GraphQL is right now. The idea, you know, at the end will be to have a single endpoint per business uh, services. Uh, and through that endpoint, you got everything you need and based on uh, your use case as a client you can invoke the endpoint to ask exactly what you need uh, ask for aggregation coming from multiple source because in graphql you also have this federation so the so it's it's based on http uh, and you describe your data through entities and when you execute some queries you exactly provide what you need and you get the predictable results. So pretty cool. To interact with the GraphQL API, multiple tools, uh, GraphQL, GraphQL Playground. In the Data Gateway Stargate, this is the uh, playground that is uh, provided to you. So let's have a look and play with it. So going back to Astra, here it is. Okay, I can close Swagger UI, I don't need it. I will go back to my tables, connect, and it's instead of going to uh, REST or Document API, I will go to GraphQL API and pick the playground URL. Okay, here we go. It will load in a minute. And uh, nice things is you, of course, you can reuse the same API key everywhere. So let me provide the API key and invoking this first endpoint to list. Uh, so the DDL endpoint, so interacting with your schema. And here you can list the key space, nothing special. Something good with GraphQL is also that is, uh, it describes itself. You can go to doc and see, hey, this is all the functions that are available to me. So create table, create type, and so forth and so on. So for instance, if I want to uh, create uh, not a key style, oh, okay. So I will work with a key space called library. So let's go to here and create a key space called library. So super easy to create a key space uh, in Astra, as you can see, it's just web-based. And so uh, when I do have what I need, I will use a mutation. So on GraphQL mutation are stuff to write the data and queries stuff to read the data. So here I do have a mutation to create two tables, books and author, that's the name. And the cool piece now is, okay, let me go to the DML um, endpoint. So here GraphQL, I will provide my key space library. I will again provide my Astra token over here. And that, hey, okay. Oh, my Astra token is truncated. So no surprise, I cannot access. Okay, so now with the full token, yes, you are happy now. So if you look at the doc, 
I created two tables and now the GraphQL uh, has been updated and I can go to books, see that we do have entities uh, related to this new table and I can delete books, insert books. Uh, so the create, read, update, delete operations are created for me. The only things I did was uh, to create my tables. Uh, so if I want to populate my tables, here I go. So, and it's, I go insert books, mobility catch. Okay, I do have two new uh, book in my table. And if, you have, if I want to retrieve the data, here I will use a query. Okay, query one book, provide the filter here, uh, Mobedic. And if I only want the title, I do like that. If I do, if I want something more, I simply have to, in the request, exactly specify what I need. And that's the neat part of GraphQL. You can exactly shape the uh, request uh, as you need. Okay. And with that, that's that's it for the demo part. So uh, again, you do have the GitHub repo. You do have the slide. Astra is free to use up to 40 million queries. Uh, so you know, no, no reason not to play with it. And I give you more sample code uh, uh, in multiple languages to use this API. So uh, last pieces, okay. Um, GraphQL Federation is included in the Graph uh, API if you need. Um, in the data stacks example I gave you, you do have some GraphQL Federation samples. This is a lot. If I put all the APIs and interface available in the single slide, that's as complex as this one. And gRPC is coming and we'll have the same flavors of SQL session uh, next Monday. So maybe you do not want to create the wrappers and clients to invoke all these API. And this is why we provided you three SDKs, Java, JavaScript, and Python to interact with all these APIs. But not only, uh, not only you can access Stargate, but also more stuff in Astra if you would like to use uh, the Pulsar part of do some provisioning, CI, CD stuff when you uh, work with um, databases. So you will initialize a single class called a client. Okay, Stargate client here, if I'm using only Stargate standalone. And based on these Stargate clients, you will say we do client dot uh, namespace dot collection to get the collection client. And then you see it's it's really fluent API. You don't have to create the, the JSON payload by yourself. Uh, it's, it's all there for you. Um, is easy to use. To get the code and the sample code for this uh, SDK, you simply have to go to GitHub data stacks, uh, but I will give you the link before leaving. Okay, so what's next? Uh, so it's an open source platform. We will keep adding stuff to expose API and also persistence extension to add new uh, databases. Uh, the idea is to have that as, uh, to become that a standard. So why not having support for SQL? Why not having support for OData? Why not having support for Dynamo uh, DB API? And the idea is, you know, later you are working with database A, uh, but would like to change for some reason, put Stargate, Stargate expose everything you need. Uh, and then under the hood, use some others database. You know, that would be cool to change uh, the database uh, by from your use case of if or if you want to move from one to another, that's easy. Also, interacting uh, with your database as stateless API, uh, help you scale uh, and more. So what's coming more gRPC support for relational and Dynamo API in the workload, uh, SSO uh, come with your own keys. Uh, zero downtime deployments to do some uh, moving moving your data from one database to another. And the CDC get notified each time someone somebody uh, edit something in the database. In the beginning, I told you about those uh, YouTube channels. So uh, to know what's coming and see what will be the session. So for instance, tonight, 
5 p.m. UK time, we will do a workshop with uh, Quarkus. And this Friday, we will do a workshop uh, to build a clone of Net Netflix using React. And the backend will be GraphQL this, this time. So go there, register, uh, be part of the community. Okay, we do have a huge Discord channel, the Fellowship of the Rings, with let's say 17,000 people almost. Uh, in between 16 and 17,000, just, just to, to be sure. Uh, here, you do have the link to, um, as well, be part of the community. I would be happy to uh, answer your question anytime. And if you enjoy the session and would like to join my network, this is how to find me uh, everywhere on GitHub, LinkedIn, on Twitter. I would be happy to have you in my network uh, and, you know, Super cool to have API friends in my network. Okay, um, thank you very much. If you do have some questions, I think we do have a couple of minutes. And in the meantime, I will just add you a link for the SDK, you know, some link I forgot to put on the slide. That's the Java SDK. That's Python SDK. And that's the JavaScript SDK. We are simple people. It's easy to find the, the UI. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know, each time you will see uh, you will see the doc in the wiki. So for instance, go to, to the Java one here, you do have the doc as a wiki, uh, how to install how to get things started, sample code. Uh, you want to use document API? Yeah, uh, what about the collection I told you? Uh, so go here. Okay, so with the collection, you can, uh, so you can here uh, check if the collection exists, uh, find it, create it, delete it, and do stuff with documents. It's uh, all there. You simply have to copy paste this code. All right, I'm at the top of the hour. Hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, I gave you all my coordinates. If you want to reach out to me and have some question in the end, never hesitate. I would be happy to answer your question. Thank you very much.